We are now ready to begin replacing this rough sculpt with actual dedicated pieces of geometry that we'll create by using uh, retopology. So I'm going to go ahead and append a z-sphere and we'll select the z-sphere and what you'll notice is it's right in the middle of the model which is which is really bad. You never want the z-sphere anywhere near your geometry if you're doing retop. So I'm going to tap the W key and we'll just scoot it out of the way and make it very small. Doesn't matter where it is, you just don't want it anywhere where you'll accidentally uh, have it interfere with your, your retop process. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop my density to 1 and my dynamesh resolution to 0. And we'll just begin on this little piece here right on the forehead. And okay, so I need to go into draw mode. I need to make sure that my symmetry is active. And what it's going to do. Oh, if I edit topology, that would be helpful. Is it's still going to use the pivot? Well, as soon as you you make a face, it'll move the pivot to where you're clicking on the geo. But but until you've made your first face, it's going to use the pivot of wherever your z-sphere happens to be sitting. So if your camera feels weird when you first start, that's probably what's going on there. And we'll need to probably just scoot this guy up. Something like that. And we're going to need some kind of circular feature around here. So there may actually be a reason to add a few more points so that we can make sure we match that curvature as closely as possible. Oh, also, I'm going to make my color just a little darker so we get a little more contrast there. And we'll just carry this one around. I'm going to give myself a little more room on that side so that I can easily get a little vertical wall here. Vertical is maybe not exactly right, but relative to the top here. Perpendicular might be a better, a better term. So right now I'm trying to move this and I can't, and that's because I must have masked when I was holding control to click on whatever the next vert happened to be. And here I'm just evening out the spacing on this a little bit. Try to get a nice predictable deformation when I go into dynamic subg. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of bring it around like this. And we'll, we don't actually have to leave that triangle in there. Get rid of that guy. And then for this, let's see, what's the best solution? Maybe we just get rid of this edge altogether. And that way we can support our curvature around the eye. So it didn't weld there. That happens sometimes. We'll just hold control. And see how that went. Cool. Okay. Tap F to zoom out, get a little breathing room there. Let's tap solo. We'll hit the A key to enable our preview. And then I'm just going to hit this Make Poly Mesh 3D. You will notice we were here and we are now here. There's only one subtool in this tool. There are nine over here, and that's where we want to go back to. So this is our Z-sphere, it's still selected. I'm going to tap the A key, and we'll delete topology, and append that piece of geo that we just made, which is right here. And you'll see this all the time, I mean, probably 100% of the time. It's going to just, it never really knows which direction you want it to have the normal going. So I'm just going to go ahead and we'll do a mirror and weld, and then from here we can flip it. And we'll take a look at what's going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, an extrude. So I've got the set to QMesh and polygroup all as my target. Turn on wireframe or the polyframe. I'll push it in and we'll do a flip. And I'll just go through and do some creasing on some of these edges where I know I'm going to want that corner to be preserved. It'll already be creased by default on the polygroup borders. 
which is a nice time saver. And I know I want this edge here to be creased. Maybe it doesn't need to go all the way, but otherwise there'll be like a strange sort of resolution between the creased area and the uncreased area. If you just have it stop halfway through. And we can pull this out to get that, 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 that angle a little bit tighter or a little, a little bit more uh, significant so that we can see a better result there. So I'm going to set the crease level to 3 and the smooth subdivisions to 4 so that we can begin to get a sense for what's going on. Uh, you will see this. Whoops. So when you tap the W key, you're going to get the transform gizmo. But when I'm working on this particular kind of geometry, this retop, I prefer the transpose tool. And the reason I like the transpose tool is it's really easy, tap the Y key to get to the transpose tool, to click on a vert and click on another vert. And then whatever you're doing, you can basically conform your geo to, to that edge. So I find that to be very, very useful. And I'll do that all the time, kind of show you what I'm talking about and why that's, why that's cool. And I'm just going to move this edge up so that th that crease there has something more interesting to describe. So you can see we get that nice form. And just to push the dynamism, we can kind of scoot this down a little bit so we get that curvature in that surface. And now we'll just need to come in here and remove the old sculpting to reveal the new sculpting. So I'm just holding Alt with clay tubes. And we'll just reveal it here. We are losing a bit of volume. Like there's a significant amount that I'm I'm pushing back. So, you know, maybe we'll just kind of move this up a bit or something. One of the nice things about it being so low poly in real life is it's not very difficult to make these kinds of changes using the move brush. and have it update right away. And I'll go ahead and add a little transition around here. So we'll do an insert, select the select lasso, control W to put this area into its own polygroup, and then we can do an inflate, polygroup all, go ahead and pull it out, we'll do a crease polygroups, and there we get that little transition, which I think is kind of nice. I don't like how sharp this is. Getting a little bit too close to a 90 degree angle. There may be you know, plenty of scenarios where I would want to keep that, but in this case it's just feeling a little rough on me. There we go. Tap the F key. Whatever. The more we do this, the more we'll figure out what the, the shape language of this particular insect is going to be. And we may come back and do a little refinement. Let me take a look one more time. So if you've got the, um, the Z-sphere selected, any Z-sphere, I think the Alt... Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. So sometimes the Alt, holding Alt to select another subtool can get a little bit a little strange. Make a little breathing room there. A lot of this stuff is just totally subjective. And my hope that uh, for what you're taking away from this is like the overall process, not necessarily some notion that there's like an exact shape that this thing needs to be. Okay, so we're at time for this, uh, this video. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up with the next one.